Nora Central suffered its first defeat of the season over the weekend, dropping its final non-conference game on the road at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. The undefeated Pointers upended North Central to win 34-27. The Cards now get ready for the start of CCIW play as they gear up for a home game against Milliken. The program also announces a coaching change that will bring an end to one of the most successful eras in program history. Step inside the red zone right now. Welcome inside the Red Zone, I'm Zach Groth. Here to start the program, we welcome North Central football head coach John Thorne. Great to have you back, coach. Thanks, Zach. All right. We had the first stumble in the 2014 season over the weekend. Stevens Point put on a, a great performance, knocking you guys off 34-27. What did they do so well in that game? You know, they played fast, and they played very physical and they maintained their enthusiasm throughout the game. You know, every time it looked like we were going to uh, get things swung back in our favor, another big play would happen and their whole sideline would just erupt. So it was a very exciting game. I love those kind of games that go all the way to the fourth quarter and, you know, whoever has the ball last still got a chance to win it. Um, uh, obviously, we would have loved to have won it, but uh, the boys fought very, very hard, and uh, we just had uh, a few too many uh, injuries, and they played it excellent football. Didn't, they didn't allow our guys to have anything that was really very easy. So congratulations to Stevens Point, and we wish them the best of luck. I mean, it's fun to watch how excited the other team gets you know, when they beat the Cardinals. We don't don't like losing, but there's still something fun ab uh, about the atmosphere because people are usually really celebrating after they beat our guys. I think it's a big sign of respect then, right? I think so, yeah, right. Let's examine how Stevens Point pulled away with the upset victory over the Cardinals. Here are the highlights. UW Stevens Point hosting NCC in its annual pink game, raising money to fight breast cancer. Third play from scrimmage for North Central. Dylan Warden kick-starting the offense with this lob toss to a wide-open Peter Sorensen. 50 yards for the senior captain, 7-point lead 59 seconds into this one. NCC trailing in the second right around midfield. Ryan Kent can't find a lane to start this play, so he takes a detour. Lots of vacant turf by the near sideline. Kent crashes in to put the cards on top 14-9. Pointers looking to respond in Cardinal territory. The lefty Larson goes right to Matt Sosinski, and he'll take it all the way to the 11. On the very next play, Larson targets Sosinski again, and why not? 11-yard touchdown grab and another lead change, 16-14. In the third, Cards get another big strike on their first drive. Play fake inside, Warden hits Zach Padded in the flat, and blocks by Sorensen and Ryan Cool rip apart the defense. 64-yard catch and run, 24-16 NCC. Six minutes later, Larson answers with a touchdown toss to Taylor. A successful two-point conversion follows, and we're tied up. Pointer first and goal, give to Jake Menzel, spins between three defenders and in for a touchdown advantage. Last chance for NCC, fourth and one with a minute 30 left. Dickon reaches for the marker on the keeper, but comes up a little short. Big homecoming upset for Stevens Point, Cardinals turn it over four times in the loss. All right, first regular season loss for the program since November of 2012. Really shows you how good things have been lately. And your teams usually do well coming off these losses. What do you tell them after a game like this? Well, we don't like losing, and we so, we so we sort of remind them about that. And uh, really, it's getting back to fundamentals. It's, it's looking at the things that... Uh, may have gone wrong in that game and then trying to figure out as coaches how can we help the guys uh, avoid being in that situation again you know I mean when we lose it's totally my fault you know I didn't get the guys ready the way we needed to have them ready for that particular team we knew it was going to be a big battle and so uh, it's it's always uh, 
a very exciting week after we've lost because everybody can't wait to get back to figuring out, hey, how do we win again? You know, so we'll see what, what happens this week. I think the guys work really hard. How much credit do you give to the Pioneers, the Pointers quarterback, Kyle Larson? A huge day for him, over 300 yards, two touchdowns, very right. few mistakes. Oh, my goodness. He did have a wonderful game. You know, the receivers are very quick, and uh, they did a great job of breaking back to the ball when he scrambled and so forth, and they, they presented themselves. Here's a target, you know, and he found the open windows. He delivered the ball very well on time. Uh, I thought they're... You know, their big left tackle is really, really good. And uh, they, they did a good job of protecting him. We had a hard time getting uh, enough pressure on him. So it was uh, their whole team did a terrific job, but he really had a, a great day. On your offensive side, issues in the passing attack, four interceptions split between Warden and Dickon. The run game did a pretty good job, though, I think. Kent, on, on a, a small amount of carries, got over 100 yards and a touchdown. Do you see the offense possibly shifting to more run heavy over the next few weeks until those passing issues get settled out? Well, it's hard to tell because we've got some injuries at the offensive line, you know. So we, uh, uh, a lot of those runs um, were not really blocked where it would pop open. And Ryan just made a great uh, job of breaking tackles and so forth. So um, certainly we're going to try to make everything a lot easier uh, reads for the quarterbacks. Uh, but you've got to give Stevens Point credit. They, they had a really great defensive scheme. Uh, they didn't show things early, uh, and they executed their, their scheme pretty well almost all the time. I mean, we got a couple of real big scores, and uh, we were thinking we could get a few more of those, but uh, it just didn't quite happen. Now that we've touched on last week's game, I want to get into the big news this week. A big change looming for the program. One of the most successful eras that the Cardinal football team has ever seen is going to come to, the end, come to an end as you step down and, and hand the head coaching role over to Jeff Thorne. What made you want to make this move and, and why announce it now? Well, I'm, uh, I'm excited for the program. I think it's the best thing that could ever happen to North Central College. I think we're, the program is in really great uh, position right now. We needed to get this weight room done. We finally got the money for that, and it's ordered, and everything's coming. So there's a lot of things that are in place that weren't there, you know, 13 years ago when we started together. And um, Jeff will do a fabulous job, but he's got these great assistant coaches. Brad Spencer's been there that whole time. He's key to what what we do with our academics, with our study table, with so many things, our recruiting program. You know, Mike Murray is sort of new to us, but he has brought so much team chemistry, so much enthusiasm, excitement, and new ideas and great ideas and so forth. You know, Adam Puchalowski has been here for a long time as a player, as a GA, and as a coach, and uh, he's his uh, expertise in our kicking game and in the weight room and, and coaching the defensive backs. So all those pieces are going to stay together. And we were able to, in the offseason, add Brad Wilson to that mix so that we have the offensive line uh, full coaching position, you know. So I'm, I'm really excited. Jeff has got a brilliant mind. Uh, he's got unbelievable vision. Uh, he's put together this uh, offense from the very beginning all, all the way through, you know. So uh, and it's time for Kathy and I to spend more time uh, together in this battle against cancer. And uh, the Lord's got some new plans for us, I'm sure, to still share our faith with other people in, in a lot of different ways. And I'll still be around the program uh, for a while, you know. Uh, uh, maybe one, two more years. Uh, it just depends on how Kathy's health is during, during that whole time. So uh, I've loved football. I'll always love football the whole rest of my uh, life, but I've really loved uh, being part of the Cardinals. And uh, it's North Central College has been a fabulous place. Uh, the administration, uh, the town of Naperville, everybody have made it just a, a complete joy for Kathy and I over these last few years. So. But it was the right time. 
Well, Coach, we've loved having you on the show this entire stretch. We're going to continue talking about the coaching change after the break. When we return, we'll continue discussing that big change coming to the Cardinal program and preview this weekend's matchup with the Milliken Big Blue. Stay with us. shelter here I come and no I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged that's a stereotype I just belong to a total loser I'm a good dog so if you want a pet adopt and if you see Randy tell him he dropped his wallet We're back here in the Red Zone talking with Coach John Thorne about his decision to hand head coaching duties over to his son Jeff after this season. What are the biggest differences coaching style between you and, and Coach Jeff, and what do you expect for him when he starts up his head coaching role next season? Yeah, well, I wasn't actually allowed to hand it over. The college made that choice, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy that they did because it allowed our whole coaching staff to stay together. And uh, I think they've done some magical things together. Uh, Jeff is a lot like his mom, and uh, a little bit different than, than, than I am in a lot of ways. But when it comes to football, his ability to see things has been magical ever since he was a youngster, you know. And so that vision is very important. That's why he was a great quarterback. That's why we've had a great uh, offense. And uh, so I'm sure he's got some great ideas. It will, ch it will change, but the part that will stay the same is we both totally believe in the philosophy and the cardinal manual and the character building. And, Faith is first, family is second, academics is third. Then we get to the football stuff, you know. So it should be a comfortable, easy transition for the players. But I also see his leadership taking us, you know, I, I, I could only take us so far. I got too old. <laughs> and so I'm really excited to see where it goes uh, the next few years. I'm very excited for all the coaches and all the players and the whole college. At practice this week, we met with a few Cardinal players to ask about the upcoming coaching changes and what impact they'll have on the football program in this week's Cardinal Corner. John Thorne will finish his incredible run as NCC's head coach at the end of the calendar year. His 13 seasons have included 112 Cardinal victories, giving Thorne the 11th greatest winning percentage in D3 history. Monday's announcement came as a big surprise, even to his players. I was a little shocked, honestly. You don't really expect, expect things like that just because, I mean, he's one of the guys who recruited me here. But then you kind of you heard rumors and stuff about it. John Thorne's decision to step down opened up the position for his son, assistant coach and offensive coordinator Jeff Thorne. Jeff has led the offense for the same 13-year stretch. He has coached six CCIW Offensive Player of the Year recipients, and in 2009, the Cards averaged more points than any other team in the entire NCAA. The team has faith that its new leader will build on his dad's success. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, you know he'll keep he'll keep this program rolling. Uh, you know he's he's Coach John's son, and uh, you know he's he's got the same philosophy. They speak the same morals. They speak. They have the same coaching style. Like. I don't think the change will be that much different, honestly. Jeff Thorne will take the reins, but John will still coach, albeit in a less demanding role. He'll serve as an assistant coach, directing his attention toward special teams. He said that uh, he'll still kind of be hanging around, so uh, seeing that familiar face and, and kind of that, that, that rock that we've had for the past few years, um, it'll be good. It'll be great. Players appreciate the opportunity to add a few more accomplishments to John Thorne's pages in the record books at NCC. The Cardinals have won or shared the CCIW championship for eight straight years, and with conference play starting this week, the team knows what's at stake. Ever since we've been here, we've, you know, it's been get six, get seven, get eight, and now it's it's our turn to get nine. So to send him out on 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 nine is divine. That'll be uh, it'll be special. He's a legend. Like it's an honor just to even learn from him. 
and be on the same team as them. How important is it to get a really strong performance out of the team again this week coming off the loss and transition back to those winning ways? Well, you know, they're putting together uh, some really good players. They're playing a lot of sophomores that got a lot of experience as freshmen. They're still playing some more freshmen here, but they've got three or four seniors that are pretty special. And so I think they've got a really nice unit. So we're really looking forward to, the, uh, to this battle. Uh, they're off to a nice start, and um, so it'll be exciting. It'll be a night game in Naperville, and uh, we love those. This is another team led by one of those low-mistake type quarterbacks. Nick Pippen's numbers aren't fantastic on the season, but they're all pretty steady and solid. 220 right. yards a game, two touchdowns a game, no picks yet. How do you force a guy like that to either make mistakes or just dip those numbers a little bit lower? You know, that's a great question, Zach. Uh, we haven't had a chance to study the film quite enough yet to have a really great answer for you, but um, he is off to a really nice year. And uh, we, we had a few mistakes in the secondary, and uh, uh, we've you know, found out uh, after the game that uh, Trey Hardima was probably playing part of the game with a concussion that nobody realized. You know, he didn't, we didn't. Um, and he made a couple mistakes that he wouldn't normally make. And so uh, I think the whole group is going to really focus hard on fixing those mistakes, creating more pressure uh, on the quarterback. And uh, so we'll see. I, it, that'll be a really fun uh, matchup because he has some really good stats. Coach, good luck on Saturday. We'll check in with you again after the game, and thanks again for stopping by. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. Don't go anywhere. After the break, two Cardinal starters will join the set to share their take on a very busy week for North Central football. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but... I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Welcome back inside the Red Zone. Right now we welcome in two of the junior starters for NCC football, offensive lineman Eric Naparek and safety Richard Zerngibble. Guys, great to have you on the show. Thanks for stopping by this week. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Okay, big news this week for NCC football. Some of the biggest news the program has had all year. Head coach John Thorne, your mentor, is stepping down, staying with the team as an assistant, but handing over the head coaching roles to Jeff Thorne. What was your reaction, Richard? We'll start with you, and then Eric, you can add your thoughts as well. Um, well, honestly, I, we knew Coach Thorne you know, was probably coming to this decision sometime soon. Um, but we really, I think as a group, everyone understood that this was going to happen, and we're all supportive of him 100%. Um, we agree with his decisions. We're always behind him. Um, so I don't think it shocked us too much, but um, you know, we'll definitely miss him a ton. I remember sitting in his office four years ago as a senior in high school, or three years ago as a senior in high school, and uh, I'm just amazed by how, how much they've done with the program. And um, So I'm really looking forward to uh, Coach Jeff and his, uh, his new experience that he's going to have as well. Uh, like Richie said, we support him 100%, and I wouldn't want anything but the best for him. Uh, and in the 13 years he's been here, he's built a program that no one can really duplicate. Uh, D1 to D3 to NAIA, there's nothing like it. Um, so we know it's, there's no one better to pass it down to uh, than his son, and his son knows the ins and outs of it. Coach Jeff, he's a great guy uh, on and off the field. Eric, as an offensive player, you've worked with Coach Jeff more than Richard has. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations for him, and what changes do you think the program will see when he takes over? Uh, things I'll see out of Coach Jeff, uh, he's, he's, such, he's so precise uh, offensively. Um, you know, I work with him every day. Um, he could snap from receiver position to offense position to quarterback and play by play. You know, He knows everything that's going on. Um, as the routine, I... 
he's he's had a great leader in front of him, and I know it'll be consistent and nothing, you know, gigantic. Let's touch on the game last week for a little bit. Not the result you guys wanted. Richard, as a safety, you led the team in 10 tackles. It speaks well of your ability on the field and your performance, but as a defense, you don't want the safety racking up that many tackles. What were your thoughts on how that game developed? Yeah, I think, um, I think our biggest problem was, um, you know, we were kind of staying out there for a little bit too long. We have the ability to stop drives, and I think we just uh, we kind of didn't do that. Um, and I know we saw a lot of quickness out of the receivers too, which was a little something different for us that we haven't seen. Um, we got a little bit of a taste for it with Platteville. Uh, but yeah, Stevens Point came out and the receivers did a great job as well as their quarterback. But um, you know, it was it was a good experience for us to have in the third game of the season, I would say. The non-conference schedule ended on a sour note, but the challenges from these early tests might pay off in the long run. On this week's What's the Word, the Cardinals reflect on the benefits of facing tough competition before CCIW play starts. It's a challenge anytime you play teams in this conference. They're, they're really, really well coached. Uh, there's a lot of excellent athletes out there. So it's been good for us to play at that level and be challenged uh, all three of these first three weeks. And you know the hope is that we come out of this and we learn and figure out what, as I mentioned before, what this team can do. Because every team's different. You know, this isn't last year's team. It's not last year's offense or defense. We've, we've got to find out what our guys can do and what they're capable of and then put them in positions to do the things they're best at. So that's what we'll take from this. We don't lose in the regular season often, so uh, when we do, we, we, we try to come back with a vengeance. And uh, the WX schools are good. We know that, everyone in the country knows that. So uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely a good test going into the conference. Uh, you get used to playing uh, a lot of these, these top tier uh, WX schools. Uh, it, it, gets, it's, it gets a little easier when it gets into uh, the conference. So uh, hopefully that, that trend continues this year. Eric, did the team play a little angry coming off a loss like that? When you, when you take the field against Milliken, does it affect your mindset going into a, a battle like that? I think it will affect our mindset. We want to come out on top, and you know, when you, when you come out down on those games, it's not something we're used to. It's not something we want. But when we take that field uh, next Saturday, um, we need to have that mentality that we need to play like we play usually and throughout, throughout the whole game. So I, I think that's what will happen. Richard, back-to-back -back losses aren't really a trend for this Cardinal team. Why do you think the groups respond so well after a game like you saw on Saturday? Uh, well, I would say the biggest reason that we don't happen to have so many back-to-back -back losses would be because we see what's at stake, and uh, we're looking forward. Uh, we're taking each game week by week. Um, we have a mentality of 0-0 going into the week, so I would say uh, taking it week by week is probably one of our biggest assets. And this question will be for both of you, Eric. You can answer first. With this being Coach John Thorne's last year at the helm, how much more of an added incentive is there to get him one more CCIW title? I know we're just starting CCIW right. play, but in the grand scheme of things, how motivated are you now? Extremely motivated. Um, he deserves that national championship without a doubt, and we want to get him that. And this ninth one will show us what we can do, and it will lead off into the playoffs, which is very good. Uh, yeah, I would agree with Eric. Um, you know, it's important to take it week by week and get that CCIW championship first, get that, that ninth title, and then um, we really want to end his career with that national one as well. But the conference one is, was at hand first, I would say. Starting off against Milliken this weekend, their quarterback Pippen, as we mentioned earlier, no picks yet this season. What's your plan of attack against a conservative quarterback like that? Oh, well, I would say our defense line and our linebackers are really going to be instrumental in that. You know, they, when we get interceptions, we owe it to them because uh, they're ferocious and they, they get to the quarterback, they get through the line, they do a great job of that. So um, we really thank them for that, I would say. Gentlemen, we appreciate you stopping by the show. Good luck on Saturday night. Thank you. Thank you. After one more quick timeout, the Red Zone will return with NCC Sports Information Director Clark Tusher to take a look around the other fall sports action. Don't go anywhere. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Thanks for staying right here in the Red Zone. Joining us now on this whirlwind week for NCC Sports, 
We welcome in Sports Information Director Clark Tusher. Thanks again for joining us, Clark. Thank you, Zach. Men's cross country is on top of the world right now in D3 sports. They're ranked first. They had another incredible first place finish at pre-nationals in Ohio over the weekend. Almost a perfect score, too. I think it was first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. What did you see out of the program, and what do you expect for them as Nationals well, approach? Well, they certainly made a splash uh, in terms of the national attention that they're getting. Um, you know, there's there's talk that the course might have been a little short, but uh, you know, regardless of the exact measurement, uh, you know, the coaches got what they wanted out of it. They got uh, uh, a good race. Uh, you know, the, the split between the top five scoring runners was just under 30 seconds, which uh, you know really uh, is going to help you a lot in a big meet like that. And um, you know they got to get a chance to go through the experience of you know the, everything's going to go into the national championship, the travel, meals, you know the the schedule, and and you know warming up, all those kinds of things. In addition to getting familiar with the course, so uh, certainly uh, you know regardless of of what the final times or really even you know the particulars of the score, the coaches were really pleased to, with everything that they were able to accomplish uh, heading into a, a week that's going to culminate in a, another big meet at Notre Dame this weekend. The women's golf team has looked better as of late as CCIW approaches for them. Third place finish over the weekend, pretty strong performances by Oberheide and Koenig. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, you know, they've, they've really, uh, in tournaments with multiple rounds, they've, they've done much better uh, in the second round than they have in the first for quite some time. This is the only 54-hole event uh, that they'll play this year that features uh, three different 18-hole rounds. Um, and it's, of course, they had a chance to get on a couple of weeks ago uh, when Illinois Wesleyan hosted their Invitational down at uh, Crestwick Country Club, which is a different course than they normally play. Um, you know, they played uh, uh, one of their better rounds uh, of the season during that tournament, so certainly some confidence built up uh, heading into the first of the CCIW championships this academic year. We already know Saturday is going to be a big event for football with that CCIW opener against Milliken. Soccer also very busy at Benedetti Worley Stadium on Saturday, men's and women's doubleheader against Carthage. Thoughts on what we should expect from that huge day for NCC sports? Uh, well, you know, for the men in particular, you know, they've been ranked uh, in the region. Uh, they're, they're trying to keep themselves in potentially uh, to get a chance for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, which would be the first one ever for them. Uh, and this is the first, uh, first conference game against a, a Carthage team that's proven you know, pretty tough to score on. So, uh, you know, they, the offensive game has worked pretty well for, for North Central, and, and, you know, they'll be counting on that to, to do the, the same as well. Uh, you know, for the women's side, they've been off for, you know, a couple of weeks now. They've, they'll have had a chance to get on the field uh, before that game uh, for another non-conference game uh, earlier in the week. Uh, but that's another team that they've really uh, been counting on a lot of new players uh, that have had a, had a chance to, to come together over the last five weeks or so. And, uh, you know, we'll be looking to, uh, to improve on their finish in the conference season. Uh, and it should have a great opportunity to do so against a Carthage team that's been in the middle of the pack in the conference. Well, Clark, I know it's been a very busy week for you and all of NCC Sports. I want to thank you again for stopping by. Thank you. That wraps up this week's edition of the Red Zone. This Saturday, the 13th ranked Cardinals start conference play at home, hosting Milliken. This CCIW battle begins at 6 p.m., and you can catch the live broadcast right here on NCTV 17 and NCTV17.com. We hope you join us again on game day. Thanks for stepping inside the red zone. I'm Zach Bro. We'll see you again next week.